there's no honor uh, in struggling. Like there's no, you know, medal for struggling or, or medal for making it hard for yourself and, and kind of, you know, oh, but I've overcome. Tell me about, tell me about your week. How's your week been? Or the, the time between the last time we spoke? Good. Um, I'm just like now working on getting the money in. I think this is the first, the first month where um, I've got jobs that I've just finished. Mm. It's, I think interestingly, it is actually the first month I have successfully completed work that is just my own work. Mm. Um, so I am the boss of I am the the boss of the schedule, the money coming in, everything. And this is although I've been still, I think as I've said, although I've been self employed for like nine years, this that having this studio has been the first time I've actually been completely like alone mm. working on everything that I'm doing. Yeah. So and this month kind of signifies that the first month of not so I've, I've been able to rely on uh, like the, the grant mm. um, and that was useful which allowed me to take my time in, in setting up the studio working on lots of my own stuff which has led to yeah. lots of really exciting things but um, I've na- I'm now like working to deadlines I finished installing a bunk bed the bunk bed that was all in bits behind me oh uh, yeah yeah Friday, great and they loved it and um, they now want a wardrobe, which we had already discussed. Um, so I'm now like, a, a client's just at the baby and she's sort of cancelled for December. So I can maybe get this job squeezed in before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm out of debt, which is nice. Great. Um, so the first, I'm still like, I was unable to pay my rent this month, like yesterday. So, and it, my boyfriend is my landlord. So he like just has subbed me the money. I'm about to get paid for two jobs. It's all going to start coming in and I can then nice. immediately start getting back on track. Um, so it's quite exciting. I'm, well, I'm trying to be excited about it whilst not quite getting there yet. It, it's a long journey. Time. Yeah, it does take time. And I think when you're, at a particular level, you feel a lot of pressure because you're just basically trying to survive, right? And you want to get enough volume, enough kind of volume of the right type of work to be thriving. Yeah. But nonetheless, there's always this pressure of you're always trying to extend the runway. Like right now, you'll have, fictitiously speaking, you know, six months rent, or you'll have three months rent, or you'll have two months rent, or you'll have 12 months rent. But but you're just always adding to extend it so you can yeah. do this thing for for another year you can do this thing for another five years you can do this thing for another three so it's always that game and i think um that that's one thing that some people find that quite heavy i think i personally think about it quite a lot like trying to extend the runway um whereas other people you know don't necessarily think so much about it and don't care much about it and very happy go lucky and, and that works for them too but i think nonetheless you need to kind of be putting things in place to to make things easier because you'll be more creative when you're less stressed when there's less pressure you will naturally be more creative which will be your best self which then means everything's just a bit nicer really yeah and i think I, i'm starting to maybe even just allow myself to do that to actually make money i had an interesting yeah. conversation with my mum actually on sunday just a bit like big long catch up about things and it was just discussing like where I'm at in general. Mm. And I think I'm finally starting to maybe give myself like permission to like succeed even at the very basics of, of income. Yeah. Um, like to actually go, it's okay to like ask for proper rates and it's okay to um, charge properly yeah so that you can actually live as well like i would like to be able to just live without having to worry about money knowing that you know the next two months are covered i'm i'm able to like work on the 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 projects that are coming in i can quote i 
drink and you know getting all these things that I've never had to deal with all at once before. So like today I'm working on two different jobs, which will hopefully cover two months of of rent. Well, theoretically, like that's part of what gets me out of debt, but that's a great place to be because then if I keep that up, and I may not, that's also like mm. the nature of finance. Um, if I do, then that's fantastic, and that is that runway thing. Yeah. Um, I find the um, just as you're speaking, like the there's no honor uh, in struggling. Like there's no you know medal for struggling or, or medal for making it hard for yourself and and kind of you know oh but I've overcome you, you know if you, if you have the tools and the skills which you do you do have the tools and skills because people are paying you for your work so it's just kind of putting the right mechanism and mechanisms in place where where you can lift yourself out of the you know it's good to struggle like you don't have to struggle you, you don't have to so be in that mindset you know like it's not good to struggle it's yes exhausting it's boring it's demeaning yeah and you're stealth through that for whatever reason um it's then like it's it's down to me to decide like this could be so much easier for you like i'm i'm starting to think like even even like quoting emailing people is an enormous task for me it's yeah i think i find every process quite terrifying so i tend mm -hmm. not to do it yeah I'm not too sure what that is but it's like i i and then that involves procrastinating because you sort of go well i can't quite click send yet because like this yeah. email isn't perfect or this quote isn't perfect or so now now that there is also like a little bit of urgency and with urgency incentive like to make real money, mm. uh, I I kind of I feel very differently about the processes that I'm going through, like the the, the daily processes that I'm going through, mm. uh, which is quite nice. Because um, I think I would like to just feel like I am actually doing, like I'm good at what I do. I'd like to feel like I'm good at what I do. Yeah, I know I am, but I'd like to feel like I, I can do it. Yeah. Um, It'd be great to so. just delve a little bit deeper into that. So if it is, you know, difficult to press send, if it's difficult to get that stuff going, I, I completely agree. Like quoting is, is one of the hardest things because every job is unique, you know? So it'd be great to know maybe just some of the detail of like, how do you cost up? What are your kind of costings? Do you cost per hour? What is your hourly rate? It'd be great to know some of that stuff just maybe there might be some like room for me to just add some extra, you know, insight or something, or, or even I can also tell you my process and that can give you insight as well. So if you want to start with yours first, then I can tailor my, my process to, to maybe what could be helpful. Yeah, that might be, that might be really useful. So I, so at a job I've just quoted for, mm. for the, First time I have quoted £35 an hour, mm. which includes, and what I say that includes is all the call out fees, the design time, yeah. the uh, manufacture, delivery, and install. And delivery could even be removed out of that. Mm -hmm. um, and I give myself like a certain amount of, so I, I, and I base like my hourly rate, I then do an eighth hour day and I say, it's going to take this many days. Um, and, uh, so that's outside of the materials, right? So you're charging for materials oh, yeah. and basically the labor cost, which is everything from bill to install to consultation yeah. to everything on an hourly yeah and how long have you been doing the 35 pounds for has that been a recent i've not actually done that yet this is i've put it into my first quote yeah. just now and i normally would charge so uh, when i was freelancing i was never paid properly i've never been paid properly yeah and i i've always known i've not been paid properly which has been kind of frustrating but and I that makes sense from the whole 
you know, there's no money in design because potentially you've been burnt along the way, which is unfair, but also, you know, a reality of it then builds your image of a particular industry, right? If you've been, you know, taken advantage of, which again is super unfair and that shouldn't have happened. But then that does build the the image that you now have of it. So to kind of break that down, especially because, you know, that kind of stuff takes a hit at your confidence to then do it yourself like okay now i can cost it for myself you won't want to put the higher rates because no one else ever did that higher rate for you when you you know all that ecosystem of of mindset and thought you know no no but that went off yeah i'm not sure sorry it's okay at least the laptop's still on (laughs) (laughs) yes and it's oh yeah so it's unplugged now but i've got full batteries so that's fine oh good um I'm just going to. So, what what were you charging? What were some of your freelance rates? What were some of your freelance rates, and what have you been charging? So, if this this the first time you put in thirty five pound an hour, what have you been charging? Well, th- there is. I've always been. So, to begin with, I've always struggled with the difference between a craft, a trades person, and a designer, and I've always struggled to split the two. And I know a lot of uh, cabinet makers who don't charge any design rates. And they cover all of it in their in their like hourly rate as a cabinet maker, like yeah. as a tradesperson. So I've always kind of worked with that. When I first started, I was on when I freelanced in London. Uh, when I was working for Heels, I was on one hundred and fifty pounds a day, which was like uh, what's that divided by eight? Like hourly rates are sort of good like 18 quid uh, an eight hour i typically do yeah. seven and a half so that's basically yeah because half an hour lunch right uh, 20 quid an hour uh, like a 150 ish yeah yeah um and then i started charging 20 pounds an hour um which was like 160 quid a day um and uh, i kind of lived on that and i was even able to like save money on that like Mm. even in London I was able to live so I got used to living to that and then I moved to um, when I moved to Dundee in 2019 I started freelancing I was teaching which was like different and Mm. the university like pays what it pays so you can't say what you'd like Um, And then I was freelancing for architects who are actually also, who were also colleagues at the university. I was freelancing for them and I had to constantly negotiate a pay rise. So they originally offered me a hundred pounds a day. And I just said like, I'm not an apprentice 10 years ago. Yeah. And like, you need to get a grip. So I started, so the most I charged them was like, I think it was like 150 a day again. And they were telling me like, this isn't London, Graham, you can't charge this much. Mm. Um, And so since leaving, since moving to Glasgow a year ago, I've been charging, generally speaking, I've been charging 20 pounds an hour. There's a couple of jobs I've charged 25 pounds an hour. And I've decided now that I don't, now I want to start charging properly, which actually is for the design part of my service as well as the physical making and the install. Like all yeah. of that is part of what I do mm. in order to make money. Um, so like last week, I turned it, I cancelled the job uh, and refunded a deposit because it was no longer worth my while. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because and that's good because you want to be in that power position, right? The power position of that this person here, where they're requesting X amount, I can afford yeah. to say no. You want to be in that position, and you will get there. Sometimes in the beginning, you you're not there, right? You need anything and everything, and, and it is building up to the ability to say no to a client, which is great. So the fact that you've done that is good practice for stuff that's not worth, you know, because you know that you end up not making money on it or, or, or whatever it is, which is not sustainable for you, which means you can't well, carry on. Yes. And that's. It was the scheduling and the stress of trying to get this done yeah. when 
essentially it was it's a brand new designer her first job she asked me to produce like some frames some mm. wooden frames i quoted a very competitive rate which i discovered was half the price of all the other quotes yeah. which may also be selling and um we then decided to buy extra material she then okayed that as a designer <laughs> Um, and then her client said, and then, but she didn't tell the client. And her client then said, I'm not paying for this. So I spent another 100 quid, which is arguably nothing. Um, and I was then told that that wasn't going to be paid for. And she didn't mm. offer to take that as the designer. She didn't offer to say, like, right, I'll pay for that. Um, that's part of my kind of managing my communication problems. Mm. Um, and she just this sort of she didn't know what to do so I thought the best thing for her and myself for her as a learning experience and for me as a slightly uh, slightly later stage was to just go like right I'm giving the deposit back you've kind of unprofessionally let me know that your client is really problematic with you mm. I'm offering free delivery within what I've charged and I don't want this coming back to me when I've finished the job so it's over. Yeah. And, and some um, of that stuff is important as well. You want a clean break. You want to produce, send, done, right? And then move on to the next thing. Going a little bit deeper to, like, for example, the wardrobe, the wardrobe thing that you're building, and also the previous bed. Like, what was the total cost for that, in, including the the kind of the the um, materials? So the the wardrobe, I yeah. Uh, so the the bed that I've just finished, I quoted um, seventeen hundred pounds. Mm. And I, I wonder if I could get the just a rough figure would be okay as well. I'm, I'm not holding yeah. to any of these. It's just a, it just helps for for an idea, really. Yeah, seventeen hundred pounds. Um, I probably spent about seven hundred on materials. Mm. And materials are now skyrocketing as well. Of course. It's difficult, isn't re- it? I, uh, we're, all of us like here in the workshop are starting to have to be... Can you hear that? No, it's good. It's fine. Okay, that's fine. I just can't hear myself when the, <laughs> the uh, impact driver is going. Um, yeah, so 700, 1700. Yeah, so I made about 1,000. It took me about a week. Um, mm. And that, so that's about two hundred pounds a day. Yeah, um, which is a pretty yeah. That's that's a uh, that's kind of all right, isn't it? Yeah, because I, I would say that's probably pretty decent for a bunk bed, or like really decent. You know, because I remember in the past we we've bought we've paid for like a custom like bench. Um, again, was like London prices around a thousand, and then we had two wardrobes installed, like top to floor to ceiling around like 3,400 for two like built-in wardrobes and stuff. So I think, yeah, as, as you've mentioned, trying to build up that kind of day rate um, it is great. And I think if you're able to have the confidence to up the rate a little bit, because you can always come down, right? You can never go up. So if you are kind of yeah. able to fit in, like I typically have always done, like typically back in the day, I've like freelance rates would be just like, oh, this project, oh, it's 500 quid, right? And I didn't really have any mechanics to it and then i started to think like actually i'll do 30 pounds an hour and estimate my time off the back of that and then as i've gone into actual actual digital contracts with project work and stuff they're at day rates and my contracts have gone from like four four fifty a day to now five to five a day kind of thing my, my old agency used to charge like 600 and that's just building websites and, and stuff like that and i guess in some ways you can always come down you can always come down and it's a case of like trying to to build that in because it allows you to get the space to get the next project in. So it's great that you're feeling that, hey, I can shift up to 32 or uh, 35. And I, I, I would be like, you know, maybe on the next one, try 40, you know, to try and squeeze that out because there's no point having, you know, that that like struggle situation um, going on. And so long as you can validate the, the rationale, the rationale is it's custom built, it's using these materials, it's kind of like um, kind of the love and the, and the affection gone into to building it. It's, it's the kind of the story behind it, right? That's important. Yeah. And I, I, I've had really great feedback from, from the client. She mm-hmm. like 
sent me photos of it completely full of her son's staff and awesome uh, was like I've just been, as I've been filling it I've been really appreciating the craftsmanship and the time that you've taken and she's like getting back to me and saying that like no one has to do that and it's yeah. lovely that that's the result oh and yeah that's really really good so like when so she was like when can I pay you annoyingly she hasn't paid me which has resulted in me hitting the limits of my overdraft and I've been able to work that out with my partner what's your what's your payment but, schedule what's your payment schedule like so when do they pay uh, the invoice is just like due on receipt. That's what's read. Uh, right. Because w- uh, what I typically do is, you know, do you do any sort of 50% upfront, 50% on completion or in thirds or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. I, I do a 50% deposit. Yeah. I, I wonder also um, if you were able to, you know, charge before the day of the installation or anything like that. Again, it's it's a case of, with all this stuff, you need to put yourself in the best position. You can always negotiate down. You can always change. You can always pivot, but put yourself in the best position. Again, obviously, yeah. you know the best practice and, and typical things, but someone probably would agree, yes, I pay the payment tomorrow. You come and install it. To, to, um, uh, sorry, I pay it today. You'll come and install it tomorrow. You know, there's a, a little bit of trust, but then you know that it's beneficial for you because you get the best possible situation. They could always like, well, I prefer to pay on the day. Okay, cool. We can do that. You know, you can always flex outside, but these are our, yeah. like the idealistic kind of situation. So you're not out because chasing invoices again is something that you don't really want to be doing. And annoyingly yeah. it, it matters, right? Because if this is, let's say for argument's sake, your one deal within that month, it matters that if they pay, you know, five days late or, or seven days late, it, it makes a massive difference. So I would also try to, yeah. you know, see if you can push the boat out a little bit to be like, well, we basically do thirds. So it's a third when I start, it's a third when I've completed it and I show you photos and it's a third on the install. Well, at least then you get two, like two thirds, you know, rather than 50%. Like, yeah. can you work that out um, to balance yeah. the installs? Yeah, working out that, I think that's the next, the next stage is for me to be doing it enough that I'm, I know what works. So yeah. maybe try, you know, thirds. you know, with, with this previous client, I've given her, you know, a system that we work with so I can just like continue that. Um, but, and I've also stated like a way that we're going to work with the next big project. Yeah. Um, but that's, well, that's saying... It. That's paying quite well. That's the Good. 35 hour one. Yeah. And they've got back and, and it's like an NHS job. So they're like, we have this budget. Everyone yeah. has said, yeah, it's not a private client going, actually, I don't want to pay. They're, it's like part of their system now. And I, I can just like get the deposit potentially before Christmas in order to order materials, actually. And that's great because ultimately you want to be in a situation where, you know, you have better types of clients which come over time. And I think, yeah, if you're able to trial new mechanisms, so, okay, this time I'm going to charge 40, you know, keep on charging until you get a bunch of no's. Then you realize, oh, okay, well, it worked at 40, but it didn't work at 50, so I'll stick it. But, you know, you can kind of um, prototype and iterate through a process in the same way, like, okay, we're going to pay in thirds now. You know, so third is on the day of, of moving. And if it's not received by 12 o'clock, we don't, you know, you could try all this stuff because you're the boss, right? You could literally decide in the moment to say, okay, for you, we won't. We'll do this. For, for you, we will install it today and you'll pay us tomorrow. You know, you've got that flexibility. And then just finally, it'd be great to know, like, how do you source your clients? Like, how do you get these clients? At the moment, the work that has come in since being in the studio has come through being at Gal Gale and knowing mm-hmm. my partner, actually. Yeah. So the very yeah. first job I got came from two of his very good friends that then led to the bunk bed job. So mm-hmm. like one of her colleagues saw the cabin I did and said, can you put me in touch? And now we're on to a bunk bed, a wardrobe, and then there'll be a third item in their house as well. Like once we're finished the wardrobe. Oh, that's um, awesome. Because do you get any... so? the kind of positive feedback that she shared with you, are you sharing that as part of your Studio Gilbert kind of like a, a, a kind of side of stuff or is there a secondary place you're doing the more kind of that stuff? I just, yeah, I, I haven't really been documenting stuff properly yet. Yeah. Because everything has just been happening. Um, like everyone is kind of 
seeing what everyone either hears about what I do and gets in touch or they see what I've already been doing because they've visited like their someone's house with it or something. Yeah. And I, I think what would be good for me to do is get the bespoke stuff. And I was actually thinking about this in more detail where I thought I don't want to work with traditional cabinetry. Mm. So somebody like I've just visited for a job that's like full height, three meter, like high ceilings, mm. uh, like solid oak wardrobes. And I've yeah. just decided yeah. I don't do that. I work with plywood because it's what my studio can cope with. Yeah. And I also yeah. work to a certain height because mm. of the material that it comes in. And I think I, I'm I would also I would also challenge just a little bit. Like if you don't directly work with it, do you know someone else that does that? That you could kind of just have a referral mechanism or a or a kind of a yeah. project manager type thing. So if there are opportunities there to do that stuff, then you could still take that on, you know, and have someone else build it for you because they have a bigger place or they prefer working with that type of material. You know? Yeah, that's a very good point. Very good point. Um because I could still be drawing up and doing all Excellent. the leads. And this is exactly what you want, right? You want that kind of design role. So if you were able to find a manufacturer or, or, or someone that could craft it all together once they're given the drawings, then you could be a little bit more kind of client facing. And then it makes it a little bit easier for you because then you're not getting stuck in the, in the deep stuff, right? You become kind of like the manager, right? Which is rather yeah. than the technician, because right now you're the manager, the technician and the founder, which becomes quite difficult to to manage all those roles all at once because if you don't do it no one else will do it so you have to do it you know it's a very good point like uh, if i could work and then you know when it comes to installing larger things you need two people so you kind of have to then factor in a yeah. second person and paying them anyway yeah so th this that project may be uh a good exercise in outsourcing certain things, which means I still get to take the job. Yeah. I make less because I'm not like making it, but I still get paid for something I would have otherwise had to turn down. Yeah. And, and ultimately it's like trialing it. If it doesn't work out, great. Try it again in a month's time. You know, if it does work out, great. You know, all this stuff is about iteration and, and trial and error. And it's okay that it doesn't go badly. It, it's all education for the next project. No project yeah, yeah. is ideal. Like I still have situations which are very, very difficult and really hard clients or very, you know, time consuming. And, and you realize, okay, I don't want those types, right? But you just still yeah. plod along and, and there's going to be some bumps in the road, but it's kind of the perseverance. Yeah, what, what I would encourage is, like the fact that she's uh, this client of yours has said such complimentary stuff. I would literally put that out on socials, you know, even if you want to create a new account, which is this like bespoke stuff. And then maybe, as you said, yeah, it, maybe it is a case of finding a supplier that could fit to that job as a prototype. Let's prototype a collaboration and let's see if this works. If it doesn't, that's fine. You've learned, right? And if it does, great. And that can be a mechanism again to to remove yourself out of this like time equals money equation because you get someone else to do it, and then you're just more the consultancy, you know, which which is a, a better shift towards kind of probably where you want to be more so on the front end of a job rather than the entire flow of a job, right? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That that sounds that's quite good to have discussed that like way of navigating the different opportunities which have just come up you know like yeah. jobs that have just come up over the next couple of months at least are are all in, in they're they all require my attention in slightly different ways of course yeah um, and i would say just batching if you can so you know if you can schedule okay this afternoon, I'm going to do these three quotes. At least then you can be in the mindset. You're in a flow. You w work from one to another. And I try and do that kind of stuff rather than, okay, I'll do this quote here. Okay, it's this stuff, right? Carry on with this thing. And if you're kind of good or bad with context switching, sometimes just batching, it just means you're in a particular quoting mindset. So it's much, much easier to bash out three quotes or, or whatever it is. But nonetheless, this is this is hard. Like, especially with bespoke stuff, it's it's not easy to create a template and be like, well, it's tick, tick, tick. You know, this is this because it's all 
hours and times, but hopefully over time you'll find what works and, and it will be easier to quote. You know, well, it's roughly three days, it's roughly two days, it's roughly five days. So you can put it in because you've done those types of projects before. But yeah, a, yeah. A, um, there is a book that comes to mind about the whole dynamics of a technician, a manager, and an entrepreneur and how they all play together. And what you want to be doing is be the technician initially and all of them. And then you find someone to be the replacement as you move up to the manager. Then you find a replacement in the manager role as you move up to the founder, the kind of the, the visionary, the person that keeps us kind of rolling uh, and going forth. And I think it was a really good um, kind of business orientated book. And maybe some of the ideas in there might help you. I would also encourage you to be like, it's okay to say yes, but then to say, actually, after discussing with my team, we're not able to take this on. So I would be encouraged, like in the moment, you might not know if I can find a supplier for this situation with this kind of t different type of material and this setup, but just say, yeah, I think we have a supplier that might be able to, to help out work this out. You then go away and be like, actually, turns out there isn't any, but or turns out that they don't have availability. You, you know, it's fine to do that just to give you that, that playing space um, to kind of think you're not being rude or, or kind of, you know, unprofessional. It's just your trying to say yes to get you moving in a certain direction, willingly or unwillingly. And then, you know, it's okay to be like, you know, unfortunately the supplier that we do use is busy. Uh, so we won't be able to do this job, but more than happy to discuss another job in the future. Like I really appreciate you reaching out to us. You know, you can be very polite and, and really, very like honest about that stuff without being, you know, uh, again, coming back to the whole, you know, dislike of, you know, making money in this thing, you know, you can be very professional and very, you know, honest about that whole thing without feeling slimy, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and w well, with a job that is potentially too big for me to deal with on my own here, I have sort of said, like, I'll give you what I can offer and I'll try to give you a cost. I'll maybe, like, put together one of the wardrobes quickly for you to see how it would look because it yeah. will be different than what you suggested yeah um, and 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 it's and it is okay if it doesn't suit you um and I, you know i'm i'm currently happy to do like a free call out um, yeah. and uh to to do a quick drawing mm. because i think people do also need to know what they're buying into yeah and it's the uh, personable nature of it. We we always do business with people we like. Literally, yeah. we do business with people we like. So if you're able to show yourself and, and kind of show your expertise, be like, so we have these variations and these mechanisms of connecting the wood. And if you did this, it will look really beautiful because then you can do this, this, this. You know, it's your opportunity to really shine in the skill set and in the expertise that you have, which is like, yeah, it's, it's your bread and butter, basically, isn't it? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I yeah, I, that that's that's been it's been really nice to be able to go over like this seems to have been a very well placed series of conversations at a very Great. particular time that I that's awesome getting uh, work like it really is helping me to process each week like over the last three weeks yeah it's been th very different weeks yeah yeah uh, and then this is it it's about like. Sometimes you just want to say what you're going to do anyway and just have someone say, yeah, that's great. Like, it's yeah. great that you're putting your prices up. Like, uh, like a kind of the co-signing of something you're already doing. It's not that you didn't know what to do. You know what, you know what you're doing. You're trying these things, which is great. That's the right thing to do. Sometimes we just need sometimes reassurance, sometimes, you know, a little bit more direction, sometimes, you know, other things. And I'm glad it's aligning because yeah. I really want these things to be helpful because we're all trying to make it in the world kind of thing. We're all trying to like build our impact, um, yeah. you know, and get things working in a, in a sustainable way. So really good to hear that these are helpful because otherwise there's yeah. no point having them, right? I would rather not have them uh, if they weren't helpful as it were. So, well, these have been really perfectly placed, I think, um, for me. So I, I've been, been very much looking forward to like to each one because awesome. each week, so full and so different um, yeah. and I, I don't I don't like charging as much as I have started charging I feel yeah. peaky and yeah. it's important for me to, to start being realistic and yeah. then to have some people like yes this is what you should be doing yeah because otherwise you're just going to resent it yeah it's sustainable business right 
Otherwise, you won't be able to carry on. So, yeah. like, worst case scenario is you can't pay rent and you have to go back to a full time role. Like, do you want that? Because if you do, great, keep charging low, right? But if you don't, that's great. And that's okay not to want that. It's okay not to want to go back to a full time role, you know? So, the way to not do that is pay, uh, sorry, charge in a realistic way. There's yeah, nothing wrong with that. It's one way you get along. Yeah. yeah. And to know that one no is literally nothing because how many houses are there in, in Scotland alone that may or may not need the, you know, you're not kind of just, oh, this person said no, therefore I can't charge this much. It's like, no, go and ask 100 people. Go and ask 1,000 people. You know, it's a, it's a volume game. And I think that's the, the second thing. Just because one person says no to forty pound an hour doesn't mean it's wrong, you know. Definitely wrong. <laughs> Sweet. Anyway, it's really good chatting with you, Graham. I'm glad these are these are helping you out. And then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link to this book that's come to mind. And um, yeah, you can have a, a whiz through it in your own time. But yeah, great chatting with you. Thanks again for your time, Dan. No worries. Enjoy the rest of your week. You too. See ya. Bye. Thank you for listening to Dan Ryland's podcast today. Hopefully you've took something away from this session. And please do tweet Dan or DM him via Twitter or Instagram or look at his LinkedIn if you have any more questions about today or anything about your personal business that you might be struggling about that Dan might be able to help. Hope you have found this enjoyable and see you next time.